you've obviously worked with Nadia um, as writer, cinematographer, and director as well. You've directed a couple of uh, your films. I have. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, you know, I saw a couple of years ago Hercules Returns with a friend of mine. <laughs> it was so funny, we just couldn't stop laughing because yeah. you, you took that kung fu redub uh, yes. uh, idea yeah. that was made famous in the 70s yes. and you took it the next step with Steve Reeves' Hercules movies and yeah. it was just so funny, really, really funny. Yeah, I'm um, you enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, and you've obviously taken your writing talents and your cinematography over to Nadia's films and I must say Nadia, I've grown up watching all your movies. All hey, your movies. I like this boy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm serious, like The Big Steel and Malcolm especially uh, are, are some of my favourite movies. In, in many ways your movies uh, feel a lot like the Australian version of John Hughes. Right. And I'm sure you've people have made that comparison yeah. in the past, yeah. Yeah, they have. Yeah. In fact, the people who've made that comparison mm. are in America. Really? Yeah. yeah. No one in Australia has actually said that. Well, there you go. I'm the first. Yeah. And, and uh, you, you've even been likened to Blake Edwards. I, have. Uh, I remember that. Yes, you know, yes. You've got that period. slapstick, uh, tongue-in-cheek yeah. comedy, yeah, which yeah, was very it, typical of his but films. It has that meat in it as well. It's it does. Not, it's not yeah. just the yeah. froth. Brilliant writing. Uh, Malcolm was just an amazing film with such a, a great ensemble of actors and characters. Um, so uh, what, are you, what are you doing with Suzanne? Suzanne, mm -hmm. we're doing a play for the Melbourne Theatre Company called Disgraced. Yes. And it is, it's about, it's about when a person is a migrant or refugee into a country, mm. They try and assimilate, yeah. and they want to become part of the status quo. Yeah. Um, and there comes a point where you think, okay, well, I am completely and utterly now Australian or American. I've integrated until an incident happens. And then when that incident happens, it mm. tells you how much you have or you haven't. Yes. <laughs> mm. Nadia, if you think about all of your pieces of work and you, David, what would be the works that really are special to you or, or favourite to you? Um, works that have um, a, a, a layered, a multi-layered human condition behind the narrative. Yep. Works like, uh, well for me, Malcolm is not just about gadgets. Yeah. It's about a lot more. And that is a film that is based you know, the character is based on my brother. Oh, and, really? Yeah. Wow. And so it was something that I had to do. Mm. To celebrate my life yeah. with that human being who gave me so much. Yeah. He was and very inventive. Uh, inventive. Uh, genius. Uh, inventive, yeah. also incredibly intelligent. Yeah. Uh, and introverted? Introverted. Yeah. So therefore the relationship that I had with that human being yeah. was extraordinary, special, and I wanted to share yeah. with the world, that uh, through my work, that I had this amazing experience in my life, which gave me the opportunity to learn about the human condition. It's, it's interesting to me that there's so much connected with your archetypal understanding that underscores your work and also in your life. I actually was a lecturer at RMIT and your sister was one of my psych students. Oh, I'm crazy. really interested in finding out a little more about your life and perhaps if you could tell us about that. And I'm very curious about what you were interested in when you were young that led you to this world. Can you tell us a bit about mm. that? Yeah, um, I was always, always interested in plays, in narrative, talking, um, telling stories. And that came from a family thing, yeah. where storytelling was a major part of our growing up. Uh, and so from very early on, I was three years of age when I first was on stage. Wow. So that gave me uh, a, a love for yes. communicating, yes. storytelling, and communicating to a larger audience. And of course, you were you played a role on Australia's biggest TV show, Prisoner. I did. It was an international yeah. success. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, not not so long ago, hmm. I David and I worked on a film called uh, Oh, 
uh, the Helen Keller story. Yeah. Oh, yes. yes. The, the miracle, miracle worker. worker. The miracle miracle worker. I watched it just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Fantastic. We movie. did the miracle worker for Disney. Yeah. And um, when I cast Hallie Kate Eisenberg, she's Jesse mm. Eisenberg's sister. Oh, wow. And cool. then we were shooting that film. She does in, like it. Yeah, yeah. We were shooting that film in Canada. Yeah. And her mother, who was on set, um, came up to me during one of the breaks with one of her friends who came in to visit her. Yeah. And that friend knew all about my performance in Prisoner. 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 Oh, that's and great. they started on set, they're talking about Prisoner and how they watch it avidly yeah. because it's on in New York. And yeah, it was an international hilarious. success. Yeah. And it yeah. went for like 600 and 30 episodes. It was a very yeah. long-running show. It was yeah. an amazing show. Yeah. Now that's the sort of television that we used to make. Yeah. yeah. One of the yeah. things I, I like know. about the way you work, your images are haunting. So we're left with that imagery afterwards and we're left thinking about the material and thinking about relationships. There's so much about relationships yeah. that you explore in your work. And I want to go away and think about a film and wonder why did you call it that title. So, for example, I'm really um, fascinated by Why Mr Reliable. I love that why movie. Why did you call it that? Uh, Mr Reliable. Mm -hmm. Because he was, as a character, Wally Mellish was a person who could do things. And mm. if he said he would do something, he would do it. He was yeah. so incredibly truthful and honest. I mean, you've got a petty criminal, yeah. but you can count on him. I His, love the juxtaposition uh, between John Hargreaves' character in Malcolm, yes. <laughs> where Colin Friels plays a simple-minded genius, yeah. Yeah. to him playing the more John Hargreaves character in Mr. Reliable. He's like a chameleon. He's such a great actor. Oh, Colin What's your relationship with Colin? You, you've got like a yeah. Scorsese, De Niro thing going yeah. on there. <laughs> Colin, uh, Colin is, is a genius. Yeah. Um, he's an incredible actor. He is he's probably the best actor we have ever created. He's an amazing yeah. actor. Uh, you see, yeah. Not only is his ability to decipher, to, to break down, to work out yeah. intellectually what the character is, what the narrative is saying, yeah. how all the layers fit in and how they're going to be communicated to an audience, yeah. he knows all that. He knows all that, yeah. And then the second part of it is to be able to be the mm. character, not to act, but to be. Yep. And the other funny thing was that I had always thought that, that Colin would be a good Frank. And it was Nadia who said, yep. Nadia and Colin said, no, you got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's, uh, that was the, uh, how that happened. One of the things I liked in Mr. Reliable and some of the other films, um, in Jungian terms, Colin had a feeling tone. He very much brought the feeling tone to the film, whereas Jackie McKenzie brought the thinking tone. Oh, I love Jackie McKenzie. That was very, very clever work because it hung together so well. It made so much sense. And in that, it also picked up our Australian sensibility about how Australians deal with disappointment and shock and horror and the casualness and the unspoken words. So yes. there's also something about you speaking to the man within the woman, the woman within the man, those layers that you yes. talked about and how important it is for people to actually listen to each other and, and be who they truly are and how much we can learn from that about the human condition. And that petty criminal had so much emotional intelligence, yeah. far more than the woman, the girlfriend. Uh, Beryl Muddle. Mm -hmm. She was so practical and she was really going to organise herself in life. But Colin wanted to create a warm hub, a family. There was the girlfriend, there was the baby, yeah. and he, would, he brought the couch from a tip, cleaned it up, fixed it up, and put it in the centre of that space, mm -hmm. which is why I wanted that to be the focal point in that frame, yeah. it was a red couch. You know, I wanted the eye to go directly to that. And then I had Colin, or the character Wally Mellish, sit there with the baby and Jackie McKenzie as Beryl Muddle. Yes. 
And of course, you worked with Jacqueline McKenzie again in Stark. Yeah. What was it like producing a, a miniseries for BBC? It was really so different. Yeah, because you were working with England yes. as well. And, yes, yes. Yeah, and the, the interesting thing is I just had... Uh, we, we started working on that project. Yeah. Um, and I was pregnant. Oh, right. With Christopher, our second wow. son. Yeah. And... Um, I, I I'd just come back from the hospital with Christopher, yeah. and had to travel to London. Oh my God! For, so, so you were recovering and directing well, simultaneously. Well, I was actually five five days, and we were on a plane oh, to London, wow. and uh, got to London, and my mother thought this was insane. Insane, yeah. So she said to our, our nanny, yeah. "Don't, I'm going to go." And she, you know, she made sure that uh, her grandchild was going yeah. to be taken care of. So she came to London with, with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, Ben Elton was the screenwriter. He was also the writer of the book that that series yes. was based on. Uh, and the lead actor. And the lead actor. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he was amazing. He said, look, if you think I can't do it, I won't do it. You know, this program is more important to me than me being an actor. Mm -hmm. But I knew he had the ability to do that, so I cast him. Um, so, all right. Do you mm -hmm. right here? Mm. I forgot your it's coming. Okay. <laughs> it's on the way. Fire? That's yeah, yours. yeah, great. Right. I'm really curious vanilla about that. Shake. Yeah, next time. Vanilla shake. You can have some of my vanilla shake oh. and the <laughs> oh skinny fat white. Thank you. Look what they presented it. I love it. And the long black? Long black for me. Thank you. And straw for your shake and spider. And obviously for your drink. Yes. Chelsea. Uh -huh. Ah, you should have a blue. I am. Match your dress. I am going to go blue <laughs> and white for Greece. There Why you don't go. You red? <laughs> Thank you. The good Thank thing you. about um, um, a spider is that you get ice cream in it. Yeah. That's like you get that for free. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you got a drink and you get ice cream. And you get ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Economy always plays a part in our lives. Yeah. But um, I'll go back to uh, go back to Stark. Yeah. The the the, uh, I guess the thing that really drove home to me that I was working in a different environment was when Ben and I sat at the BBC around a, a huge table and there were about seven or eight executives and they were all older yeah. with their suits on and they were all very polite and very mannered, you know, very incredibly English. Uh, they brought with them amazing knowledge to the table yeah. oh. about, yes. about narrative. Yeah. Thank and, you. And Becky? Yes. Red. Thank you. And uh, we're sitting at the table discussing the, the, the whole, the scenario. And at one moment, Ben leant across the table from me and he said, Nards, you've struck a leak. Feeding. <laughs> and it was oh God. it was incredible. I mean oh, here is this year So people talk about today they talk about oh and yes, yeah. how are we gonna integrate, you know, women and babies and all that stuff. Yeah. It's like stop talking about it. Just do it. Just oh do it. Yeah. And so he said and I said to him, Oh, time to time to express, Ben. And he said leave it to me. So he said to them, nobody else realised what was going on. Yeah. And he said to them, well, gentlemen, in his beautiful British English accent, tone, yeah. British accent, well, gentlemen, shall we have a cup of tea? Really? And so they yeah. all filed out, went to have a cup of tea. Yeah. I went into the room next door and expressed, because I brought my expressing machine with me, yeah. put it into a taxi, and the taxi took the milk to my mother to wow. feed the baby. Wow. <laughs> And, and then I continued yeah. as... A, a mother is know. a multitasker. It, it's literally... So, yeah. you, it's like, it's, it's not impossible. It's not brain surgery. No, no. 
But it's, it was it's just difficult. Do it. It's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. yeah. And you did such an amazing job. I mean, the series was really popular so much, in fact, that they released it in theaters later. Yeah, they That's did. That's incredible. They did. And how long did it run in theaters yeah. for? I don't know, but I know yeah. it was incredibly popular in theaters in um, in Scandinavia. Yes. Yeah. And uh, you know, when when suddenly you know the BBC thought, oh yes, this is really going to work as a mm, mm. theatre production, or not theatre production, but the, uh, screening in theatres. Yeah. We edited it for as a two a two hour version. It's incredible. It, 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 it was interesting too because it was, in some respects, it was before its time because it, it was. Yeah, I think know. it was the quirkiest. Yes, uh, you know, the guys who yeah. had wrecked the Earth decided yeah. to buy all the Apollo mission stuff and go up and, yeah. and take time out on, on the moon yeah. until it repaired itself and then they were going to come back. It's, you know, it's, it's just, like, yeah. I think I've seen that movie since <laughs> then, you know. I have too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. David, in your life, when you yeah. were a child growing up, yeah. what sort of things did you do with your time? What interested you? What did you play? Oh, my God. What well, look, there, there is a couple of strains to it. One was I was always very mechanically oriented, and certainly all those gadgets and things that Malcolm and Ricky and Pete were, were very much, um, you know, part of, part of me, I guess. Great um, movie. Um, thanks. Uh, and the other side was that my dad was an actor and a musician and, and a teacher. But um, one, of the, one of his jobs was that he was uh, an organist in the movie theatre. Mm. And so there used to be an organist uh, for your younger viewers and, um, and they'd play as you walked in. Mm -hmm. and, then the, and then the organ would go down, would actually be on a rise and it'd go, it'd go down. You'd see the first feature in those days. And then up it would come again at interval and he'd play for interval. And then we'd leave. Mm -hmm. So he'd take me along to the movies. So I only ever saw the B movie. I never saw the A movie. Roger Corman. Yes. <laughs> all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it was War of the Worlds or whatever. Oh, but, but it was it was so that's there are there are two things that I think that that's, that affected me was that, that my influences were more B grade movies than A grade movies. <laughs> And the other thing was, we'd often and Hercules Returns was, yes, a, was exactly a reflection that. of that. Yes, yes. Um, but but what, what, the good thing about it was that you you learn innately learn about structure. I think it's it's so critical, and I think if there's a, if there's been an issue with with Australian uh, uh, film, it's often been been structure. I mean, I think it's multi multi level the areas that we really have to concentrate on. But in this country, we don't have a tradition of screenwriting like they've had in America. And we've had to grow that very quickly. Yeah. And uh, The new uh, wave brought that in the 70s and 80s. Exactly. exactly. But so much of it is exported once it becomes popular. It's, so, it's such yes. a shame we don't have that hub yes. where we just grow yeah. a strong, strong yeah. re retention here. That's right. We don't have that. Well, see, Errol you know, Flynn went, Rod Taylor went. Right. Yeah. yeah. Everyone went. And, you know, even, but even more recently than that, Beresford said he made seven movies in Australia before he went to Hollywood. Mm. Now, mm. you don't even make one mm. sometimes. The man who made the um, Legally Blonde. So, Robert Lachetti. Robert Lachetti, sorry. Robert Lachetti, yeah. because he was a student of mine. Oh, he was? Yes. Mm. It was interesting with um, Robert because I had, uh, David and I have made um, two uh, movies called uh, For the American Girl. Mm -hmm. American Girl mm -hmm. Company, mm -hmm. uh, together with Warner Brothers yeah. and so on. And uh, the producers of those movies are um, Elaine Goldsmith Thomas, who was the main producer, and Julia Roberts. Mm -hmm. It was Julia Roberts' company that mm -hmm. actually did it. Mm. I never realised she had her own company. Yeah, she has. Wow. It's in New York and her sister runs it and mm -hmm. it was uh, Elaine who was running it. So Elaine called me and said, I've just taken a meeting with a young boy from Australia. And she was the one who was behind him getting Legally Blonde, which was his breakthrough movie. Yeah, yeah, and it was. Yeah. And I don't think he topped that film. It was just such a, a definitive... It was really well written. Really well written. The, and the, it made the script was amazing. I knew the script because yeah. Elaine was involved, mm -hmm. and clearly there's a relationship with Elaine and us. Yeah. 
and um, and uh, so you know, and his short was really good. He con yeah. as a student, he concentrated yeah. on that short and made sure that it was going to communicate his skills. Yeah. I think it was and in a supermarket, did, was it? It was a, a supermarket he, short. And he did, uh, he did this, he did an amazing meeting where, uh, and it was after that meeting that Elaine called me. Right. So he, he was very good at selling himself. And and, selling himself. Yeah. Yeah. That, one of the things that um, <clears throat> you've been really known for is helping students, supporting students with talks, teaching, mm. that generativity that, that mm. you bring. There's something very special about the capacity you have to influence so many people here. By you did workshops I here know. in New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. If, you were, if you were giving advice to actors, filmmakers, writers, directors, whatever, what sort of things would you, would you say to them? Well, you know, I do workshops, I do what they call master classes, mm -hmm. virtually all over the world. Mm -hmm. I've done them in New York, Los, An uh, Los Angeles, London, yeah. sometimes I'm actually, I go to London specifically to do master classes. And I read that you also had a retrospective in <laughs> Moscow. Yes. <laughs> wow. The <laughs> Russians know. are watching your moves. I know, it's fantastic. It's so good. And the funny, <laughs> the funny thing about that was yeah. I was there for the retrospective. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I mean, I can speak Russian. I mm. understand it. I'm not good because I don't speak it every day. Hello. <laughs> but the, uh, and we were watching, they were screening at that time, um, mm. The Big Steel. And there was this is back in the nineties, mm -hmm. and the and the the term steel yeah. was being translated, and they were translating. There was this voice that was translating, steel. just like in Hercules Returns. Yeah, yeah. It was translating as the movie was playing. Yeah. All right. And I'm listening to this translation. Wait and a minute, they, they did a live thing. They did a oh, live thing. One voice doing everywhere. God. <laughs> yes. That is terrible. And you know, Russians are synonymous with that. Yeah. No matter what movie you, you borrow, yeah. my, parents, uh, my parents are Russian. Yeah. And when they borrow a movie from the video library, all the English movies they borrow, and they can watch them in English because they know English, yeah. but they still prefer watching them in Russian. Yeah. And it's always one actor doing yeah. all the voices. Yeah. Women, yeah. children, yeah. men, yeah. everyone. Yeah. 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 So here is this, you know, uh, here is this um, uh, this voice, yeah. and it's talking about the big steel, but it's not really talking about steel as in thievery. Mm. I'm listening to the translation, and it's about the metal. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't make sense. So I had to go explore in this building and find mm. where this person was translating and tell them that it's not the steel of the metal, yeah, yeah. it's the steel of thievery. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in Russia they call it the Yeah. Thief, so yeah. the, uh, and the reason why I do have that is yeah. because uh, in my, one of my, you know, in my heritage there mm. is Russian. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. So, What's so it's call? kind of <clears throat> Russian, and yeah. Greek and Macedonian and wow. all those wonderful Les things. Les is Macedonian, the, the owner. I think I know him. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's done a great job. Yeah.